Hey y'all, today we're gonna to show you how to increase your forage growth by almost or more than 300% per season. If you saw us from the very beginning on this channel, if you go back and watch some of the previous videos when we first got here, this time of year, it would be eight foot high weeds or what everybody else calls weeds. They're really pioneer species. The only reason they're there is because there is too much of something in your soil, not enough, too much compaction, you know, pick your choice. In fact, this time of year, it'd be goldenrod. You couldn't even see me from here to that camera this time of year. So how do we get it to where it, from what it was to what it currently is? Because y'all believe me, this is astonishing, astonishing growth. Okay, so when we first got here, this area was nothing but a muddy mess. They had way too many cows out here and they were homesteaders. And just go back and watch that video. I talked about how homesteaders can be the world's solution or it can be your, one of your biggest problems, okay? We're gonna cover a lot of that sort of thing in this video and probably hit on a few other subjects. Okay, look at this. This is where the sheep were. And if you take a good look in this area, this time of year, we gotta move them every day. We literally move them every single day. It might even be twice a day, depending on where you are. Now, when we first got here, we were moving them, let them do a little bit of impact, and then we'd go through a weed eater, knock down all of the weeds, and then move on, move on, and move on, move on. We've been doing that, and now this year, we're really starting to see things sing, y'all. I mean, it's, in fact, there's so much awesome growth that they're not even impacting this thing enough, so we might have to get to the point where we go get a weed eater and then come behind them and then knock it down again, because frankly, there wasn't enough for them initially. Now there's way too much, but now we got the bull up there, and he's doing his share, and it's still not enough. Now, we've talked before about how we're gonna get that bull some steers to hang out with in the process. It's just trying to find steers right now is like trying to find Bin Laden. All right, so here's the area where they currently are. We're about to move them this morning. Now, I know it's gonna be hard for you to tell, but basically, they've eaten about a third of this in a day, maybe a little bit less than that. And they've stomped a fair amount also. When you have, you know, cows and stuff like that, they get a little more of that thing done. But they've eaten a third, they've stomped a third, and now we're gonna leave a third. There's a bunch of different grazing methods you can go by, and frankly, all of them are gonna help improve what you got. But do not just leave them anywhere. So now that these guys have done, what happens next? Well, chickens are not real big fans of high grass. But three days later, roughly, we're gonna get them over here. They're gonna follow the path of the, of the sheep. They're gonna bust up the pest cycle. They're gonna eat any kind of worms, any kind of, any kind of things that would wanna harm these sheep. The chickens are gonna go by, they're gonna cleanse that area, and they're gonna be fed. So we've basically taken the chicken tractor on steroids on the road, y'all, as we've discussed in the previous video. So they're gonna come back here. They're gonna make their way up through here. You wanna get grazing patterns set up, y'all. And as far as resources, because a lot of people hit me up about that, check out the genius Greg Judy. Check out the genius Joel Salatin. Check out the genius Jim Garrish. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Get subscriptions to things like Stockman Grass Farmer. Folks, you can learn so much by doing that. A lot of the people that are asking me, what do I do? I try to reference some of these materials. Some of them, have, you know, you gotta open and read. I'm not being critical of those people, but if you think you're gonna learn everything on YouTube, I got news for you. There's too much nuance, too many things that cannot be conveyed in a YouTube video, not a movie. It can't be done that way. But books are a really good resource, but what's even better is going somewhere, as we're gonna show you today, of going somewhere and seeing how professionals really, really do it. So with that said, we're gonna get these guys moving and we're gonna talk some more. Side note, 
Y'all, before we started doing this, this ground was as hard as woodpecker lips. And now we can just step these bad boys in and out, no problem whatsoever. That is improvement. That is massive improvement. All that compaction, all that stuff, gone. Oh, a little side note, y'all. Remember, June 11th and 12th, Self-Reliance Festival. Everybody's asking me, how do I process animals like these? How do I do pigs? How do I do cows? How do I do all of it? I'm going to show you at the Self-Reliance Festival. Going to be a lot of cool people there, so check it out. Show up. Be there. Be square. All right, so they're in the new area. They're grubbing. And you can see, honestly, they are. This is, folks, I've said it a million times, the most satisfying thing that I do every single day is putting animals on new ground and there is nothing more satisfying than that y'all I really mean it you see everything change about the behavior they're perfectly content couldn't be better okay so let's also talk about this structure I think this was episode 100 that Michelle welded this together okay and basically this is a sheep tractor just another version of a chicken tractor but it's sheep okay so what happens you can use this maybe in a smaller area, maybe just to try to get your grazing in order. Let's say you have time to move this thing. You could use this as your barometer through the landscape, you know? Use something like this to teach you how to graze. So you're seeing exactly what impact they're doing in a specified area. Then maybe you move it, then maybe you move it. This time of year, you depending on your stocking density, you may have to move that thing four times a day if you have time to do it. Maybe based on what you have in there, you move it once a day, twice a day. But just as your first barometer, just get, develop your grazer's eye by looking what impact are they making in there? How long did it take them to do it? Pay attention to the time of year. It all matters. Okay, with that said, moving on. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. So I'm standing in a different location. They will ultimately work their way all the way through here. And we're going to come around. The, they basically clear the fence for us. Okay, and there's a hot wire on top of that fence encircling the entire property. So we can tether a hot wire from there to their sheep fence, no matter what. So there's woven wire over there. We got a lot of deadfall, but right up here through the woods, y'all, we've cleared some of this. Nowhere near, nowhere near, oh, if I don't fall down, <laughs> nowhere near what needs to get done up through here. But that's basically where they're going to work. They're gonna work all the way through these woods and there's a whole lot of medicinal things that they can get up in here. But hey y'all, here's this is also a cautionary tale as well. This is very important, so pay attention, please. When you get to this point where you see all this improvement, you may have the compulsion to think, oh shoot, I can just get this, 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 and this. Well, that's why this place was damaged in the first place. That's why 80% of the trees up in here have to be cut down because they are dead as a result of overgrazing. Not only were the pastures screwed up, we couldn't find a single worm out there, y'all. They put so much worm killer, bug killer, everything killer out here, you couldn't find a single worm. Now, I stick a shovel in the ground, worms galore, okay? That's a good barometer too. So we're seeing that using these right techniques, you can cleanse the land, you can heal the land. That's exactly why we don't talk about anything about sustainability. We're not in that business. We're in the regeneration business. That's what you should be in also. And folks, when you can do it, where you can produce so much, where it's to the point where all six of the freezers up there are filled and I got to give food away. So all in accordance with that permaculture, those permaculture ethics, earth care, people care, guess what? By grazing properly, we're looking after the earth, right? People care. We are doing these methods. We've only been here two and a half years and we've had to give away three pigs tons of chickens, all, nearly all the eggs, because it has become so abundant. I'm not saying this to brag, y'all. I'm saying that when you when you do these methods, as we've proved with the, um, when we were back in Texas and we walked away from that orchard and made it into a food forest, these things work. Only difference is, if you think you're just gonna go out there, throw a, couple of, a cup of feed and then walk away, well, it ain't gonna work. It does require something out of you. And it ain't that much. You get a little bit of exercise, you get all this stuff done. Now, when you see this improvement and you think, okay, I'll just go back and get way more animals. Well, here's the process you run into. I won't say the name of the place, but there was a place I knew of in Louisiana. They were all organic, they raised pork, okay? And they were doing a good job of it. 
doing everything in accordance with all the permaculture and managing principles, but they get to selling their retail meat and all of a sudden they got to meet that demand. And because of it, they put way more animals in too small a space and they played it out. They destroyed what was, what was originally a very, very beautiful location. Same thing to a certain extent is even happening with us. We sell comfrey as many of you know, okay? But we're getting to the point where we've, we've hit almost the brick wall of how far we can go with comfrey without giving it a rest. So we're able to extract out what we need, but then you gotta hit that point where you're saying, okay, whether it's my animals grazing, whether it's my chickens, whether it's my plants, whether it's the things I'm harvesting, at what point do I need to pull myself out of it, even if it means you don't make money, even if it means you don't do anything. Look, the most important thing, all of this means nothing if you destroy the very land that creates the sustenance for you. So remember that y'all, that's the most important thing I gotta say. But hey, when I go 360 around here and I look at this whole area, every single bit of it was covered in goldenrod and all of the other pioneer species out there. And I see what it's becoming. Y'all, it fills me with all kinds of joy. That's why when I say permaculture is my passion, I mean it. I mean it. And it gets me a little bit emotional when I see all this stuff turning out to be exactly what I think the Lord has intended it to be. So y'all won't, I can go on forever in a day. I can wax philosophically about this, but I won't. Remember, if you need bone sauce, world's best deer repellent. We got it at the website. Comfrey, we're getting kind of low. We've discontinued for now the 50 count bags, but we got tens and twenties until we can't responsibly harvest it. So we got that for now. Hopefully we can keep up with the demand. And uh, EMP Shield, y'all, look at the world around you. You know what's up. Chicken processing video, we got it down there too. Check the description box. Check us out on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support, y'all, and happy grazing. Till next time, this is Billy from Permapastures Farm, where permaculture really is my passion. We'll see y'all next time.